In a lot of your homebrew projects, you'll be using a lot of components. One of the very common components you will need are connectors of some sort. When uh, using printed circuit boards, I'd like to use small connectors so that I can remove the circuit board uh, simply by unplugging the connectors rather than soldering lots of wires. And one of the connectors I use a lot of is the KF2510 type. It's a polarised connector with a 0.1 inch grid. In this project down here I'm using an Arduino Nano and it's mounted on a perf board and the perf board contains a number of polarised KF2510 connectors as you can see there. Uh, here is the actual Arduino mounted on a inside a box and you'll see I've started to attach some of the connectors with leads on them. I like to colour code the edge of the connector so that I know which pin is pin 1. Sometimes red telling me that it's uh, got a voltage on it like 5 volts and green if it's ground. It does help when you uh, plug them in to get it the right way around although they're polarised that's just a little bit of extra information that, uh, that helps me get it in the right way around. With your homebrew project you've got to make a decision as to what sort of connectors you're going to use. And there's quite a lot of options you have available. I tend to use the 0.1 inch spacing type connectors uh, and there's uh, a, few, a few choices you can make there also. The 0.1 inch is, is, is good because you can uh, use them on uh, all the types of little circuit boards you can buy with holes in them and uh, Vera board. So uh, 0.1 inch spacing is quite quite handy. You have a choice of what's called the KF2510, the XH2.5, the DuPont and also the 0.1 inch headers. There's also what's called the JST. Now a lot of these connectors look very similar but one thing that uh, you can use to distinguish between the different types is the actual shape of the pin that goes into the housing. This is a KF2510 and has a little loop. There it is down here. This is the XH2.5 and this is the DuPont. This is the uh, male pin and there's also a female pin. Uh, here are some more connectors. This one here is 0.1 inch spacing, two rows. It's a displacement type connector where a ribbon is, uh, cable is put inside the plug and then the plug is compressed onto the ribbon and the connections are made by displacing the plastic. Over here we have a uh, typical header strip and here is the female version of that which you'll often see on circuit boards such as the Arduino. Up here we have the what's called the JST PH type. It's a smaller version of the SXH2.5. Sometimes when you buy or order XH2.5s they might send you those instead which are slightly smaller. So uh, there's a closer look at the JST PH. It's uh, used a lot in toys and uh, uh, little uh, remote control cars and things like that. Uh, there's one used on the end of a little motor which uh, comes out of a mobile phone that uh, makes a, a shaking noise when the, the phone rings. The KF2510 polarised connectors are available from local electronic suppliers in Australia and also on the web. Up here you'll see a box that you can buy which contains a number of different sizes. The KF210 tends to start with two pins and ends up around about 10 to 16 pins. Above it you'll see a little box of um, DuPont connectors which you can also buy in bulk. They're quite cheap if you buy them in bulk. Individually that's still not that expensive. But uh, And you can also buy um, wires with the terminals already crimped on the end of the wires so that you can plug them into the housing. Here's a, uh, a wire with a terminal already uh, pre-crimped onto the lead and they come in different lengths and different quantities. Again they're not that terribly expensive. In the case of uh, pre-crimped leads it does make it easy. You don't have to do anything just simply plug them into the shell. Uh, here's an 8-way cable I purchased with the wires already in the enclosure or in the shell. It's actually quite convenient to buy it that way. You get the, sh you get the plug and you get eight different colored wires. And the, the cost of buying them like that is not much higher than buying individual wires and individual housings. So I tend to buy them already uh, made up like that. The other end of that lead has just tinned Two little uh, has a little bit of tinned wire on the end, so I then add my own uh, terminals or do whatever I need to do with the other end of the leads. Uh, having said all that, you can buy pre 
crimped leads and so on. One thing you do have to do, however, is sometimes make a short lead or a longer lead. In that case, you have to use the individual pins and attach them to the leads. Now, you can buy a crimping tool to do that. Now, here's one I've got. Uh, I purchased that on uh, on the web. Not too expensive, but I found that it's uh, it works most of the time, but every now and then there's an unreliable connection. The idea is that the pin gets crimped. There's no solder on the pins or the wire. It's simply just a a cold weld of some sort. However, every now and then the wire won't won't stay in the inside the the uh, pin properly, and so it falls out. So I now tend to solder my wire to the pins, and I'm just going to show you how I do that. This is the probably the most frustrating part about making these connectors. You've actually got to start making your own leads at times. Uh, here's a strip of connectors and I'm going to attach this white piece of wire to one of these uh, terminals. I removed the insulation off the wire approximately two millimeters and it's been tinned. So we'll just remove um, one of the terminals using just a pair of pliers. So if we can get this in the camera shot. Just break that off. And we'll now mount that in a small vise. So I've now mounted the pin in the vise. I've heated the, heated the bottom of the pin and just put some 0 0.1, 0 0.71 uh, solder inside that section of the pin. This is where the tinned part of my white wire is going to be soldered to. So I'll just uh, show you that. Now the plastic insulation has to go into this part of the pin. So when we push these little tabs down, they uh, they hold the plastic part in. So we just uh, drop that in there like that. Hold it steady. You've got to hold it steady. And it looks alright. So we now remove that. And we are going to uh, now use a pair of pliers to just um, crimp it. So having done that, I've now um, I've got a little yellow wire here. I'm now going to um, use a, a pair of pliers to crimp the little tabs over. The first one I do is the one with the solder and it's got to go down nice and straight and deep enough otherwise it won't go into the housing so you've got to just go grip it. It's a bit hard with the camera here and yeah, just like that. Don't know if we can see that. And then the little tabs over the plastic and again you have to make it nice and round if you make it too fat, it won't go into the housing properly. So, there we go. So, there it is there. So now we can uh, fit that into the housing. I'm using yellow for the VO connection. So, I'll just put that the right way up. And it goes click. Once it's clicked, it's in. And it's done. So that's it. That's how uh, I make my little connectors up. I find soldering's uh, fairly reliable. Right now, if you make a mistake and get in the wrong hole, using a fine-tipped scriber or pointed object like this, you can push down through there and just extract the pin without damaging it too much. There's a tiny little barb that sticks up. That barb engages in the square in the in the square hole, and that's what stops it coming out. You'll hear it click when it goes in. So that's how we uh, assemble these little uh, connectors with the homemade wire. I find soldering is, is, is much more reliable than the, the crimping tool I've got. No doubt if I had a very good crimping tool that would be quite good as well. But the, uh, with the soldering I haven't had any, any problems.